Talk about balanced budgets. You took four major projects into bankruptcy over and over and over again. You can't take America into bankruptcy. That's what's wrong with the politicians in Washington right now. They think we can take a country into bankruptcy. We every major business leader has used the I never went bankrupt, by the way, as you know, everybody knows. But we, out of hundreds of companies, hundreds of deals, I've used the law four times, made a tremendous thing. I'm in business. I, may, I did a very good job. But I will say this, and people are very, very impressed with what I've done, the business people. But when the folks of Iowa found out the true facts of the job that you've done in Wisconsin, all of a sudden you tubed. He was number one. Now he's number six or seven in the poll. So, look, we brought it out. You were supposed to make a billion dollars in the state. You lost 2.2. You have right now a huge budget deficit. That's not a democratic point. That's a point. That's a fact. And when the people of Iowa found that out, I went to number one, and you went down the tubes. Governor Jake, Walker? Yeah, absolutely. I'll take this out. Because this is an issue that's important in this race. Just because he says it doesn't make it true. The facts are the facts. We balanced a $3.6 billion budget deficit. We did it by cutting taxes $4.7 billion to help working families, family farmers, small business owners, and senior citizens. And it's about time people in America stand up and take note of this. If you want someone who can actually take on the special interest of Washington, uh, which you yourself just said you were a part of, using the system, we need someone sure. who's going to stand up and fight for average Americans to put them back in charge of the government. I'm the one who's taking that on. I'll do that as your next president. Let's move on. Jake, a phenomenon Jake. going on in the race right now is that the political... Okay, Governor Kasich, go ahead. Listen, you know, I, if I were sitting at home and watching this back and forth, I'd be inclined to turn it off. I mean, people at home want to know across this country, they want to know what we're going to do to fix this place, how we're going to balance a budget, how we're going to create more economic growth, how we're going to pay down the debt, what we're going to do to strengthen the military. So we've just spent 10 minutes We have minutes a lot here. of issues coming well, up, But sir. wait a minute, with a lot of an hominem. Now, I know that it may be buzzing out there, but I think it's important we get to the issues because that's we what are the people the issues, want, sir. and Thank they don't you. want all this fighting. Well, a phenomenon going on in this race is that the political outsiders in the race, Dr. Carson, Donald Trump, Carly Fiorina, all together have majority support in the polls. Governor Christie, I want to ask you about something that Dr. Carson said the other day. Dr. Carson said campaigning is easier for him because he's not a politician. He can just tell the truth, therefore, while politicians, quote, have their finger in the air to see and do what is politically expedient. Governor Christie, tell Dr. Carson, is that a fair description of you? Well, I know Ben doesn't think that about me. I'm sure he was talking about one of the other guys, not me. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as being an outsider is concerned, as far as being an outsider is concerned, let me tell you this, Jake. I am a Republican in New Jersey. I wake up every morning as an outsider. I wake up every morning with a Democratic legislature who's trying to beat my head in and fight me because I'm trying to bring conservative change to a state that needed it desperately. And so everyone can talk up here about their credentials, but the bottom line is every morning I get up, I vetoed 400 bills from a crazy liberal Democratic legislature. Not one of them has been overridden. I vetoed more tax increases than any governor in American history, according to Americans for Tax Reform. What folks want in this country is somebody to go down there and get the job done. And that's exactly what I'll do. So I know this much, that what the American people want to hire right now is somebody who believes in them and believes that they are the ones who can fix our country. I will be the vessel through which they can fix this country. But it's not about me. It's about all of you and getting this government off your back and out of your way and letting you succeed. So I know that Ben wasn't talking well, about me. Out. Look Thank at him you. smiling at me right now. I know Ben didn't mean it about Thank me. Thank you, Governor Christie. One Dr. of these other guys, I'm Dr. sure. Dr. Carson, who were you thinking about on the stage when you said that? <laughs> and Be honest, Ben. And Be more honest. broadly, is experience in government not important for a president to have? Typically, politicians do things that are politically expedient. And they are looking for whatever their particular goal is. That is not the reason that I have gotten into this thing. I am extraordinarily concerned about the direction of this country, the divisiveness that is going on, the fiscal irresponsibility, the failure to take a leadership position in the world. All of those things will lead to a situation where the next generation will not have a chance that we've had now. So I don't, uh, I don't want to really get into de de 
describing who's a politician and who's not a politician. But I think the people have kind of made that decision for themselves already and will continue to do so as time goes on. Thank you, Dr. Carson. Jake, it wasn't me. (laughs) Jake, I'll tell you you why people are supporting outsiders. It's because you know what happens if someone's been in a system their whole life, they don't know how broken the system is. A fish swims in water, it doesn't know it's water. It's not that politicians are bad people. It's that they've been in that system for Ever. The truth is 75% of the American people think the government is corrupt. 82% of the American people think these problems that have festered for 50 years in some cases, 25 years and in other cases, the border's been insecure for 25 years. 307,000 veterans have died waiting for health care. Mm-hmm. These things have gone on for so long because no one will challenge the status quo. You know what a leader does? They challenge the status quo, they solve problems that have festered for a long time, and they produce results. That is what my whole life has been about. People know this is about far more than replacing a D Thank you. with an R. Thank this is about changing the system. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Marina. Governor Bush, in addition to the fact that he's an outsider, one of the reasons Mr. Trump is a frontrunner, Republican voters say, is because they like the fact that he is not not bought and paid for by wealthy donors. Mr. Trump has repeatedly said that the $100 million you've raised for your campaign makes you a puppet for your donors. Are you? No, absolutely not. People are supporting me because I have a proven record of conservative leadership, where I cut taxes, $19 billion over eight years. We shrunk the state government workforce. We created a climate that led the nation in job growth seven out of eight years. We were one of two states to go to AAA bond rating. People know that we need principle-centered leadership, a disruptor to go to Washington, D.C. The one guy that had some special interests that I know of that tried to get me to change my views on something that was generous and gave me money was Donald Trump. He wanted casino gambling in Florida. I didn't want it. Yes, you did. Totally false. You wanted it, and you, you didn't get to, it I because I was it. opposed to casino I, gambling I before, promise I during, it. and after. And that's not, I'm not going to be bought by I anybody. I promise. If I wanted it, I would have gotten it. No way, Ben. <laughs> Believe me. Nope. I know my Not people. Not even possible. I know my people. Is there anything else you want to say about no, this? No, I just uh, will tell you that, you know, Jeb made the statement. I'm not only referring to him. I, a lot of money was raised by a lot of different people that are standing up here. And the donors, the special interests, the lobbyists have very strong power over these people. I'm spending all of my money. I'm not spending, I'm not getting any. I turned down, hun- I, I turned down so much. I could have right now from special interests and donors, I could have double and triple what he's got. I've turned it down. I've turned down last week $5 million from somebody. So I will tell you, I understand the game. I've been on the other side all of my life, and they have a lot of control over our politicians. And I don't say that favorably, and I'm not sure if there's another system, but I say this, I am not accepting any money from anybody. Nobody has control of me other than the people of this country. Governor I'm going to do the right thing. You, you got, according to, your, uh, to what you said on one of the talk shows, you got Hillary Clinton to go to your wedding That's because true. you gave her That's money. True. Maybe it works for Hillary Clinton. I was, excuse it doesn't me, work Jeff, for anybody on, Jeff, this, on this stage. I was a this, businessman. I got along with Clinton. I got along with everybody. Yeah. That was my job, to get along with people. But the I simple didn't fact wanna, is... Excuse me. One second. No. I the didn't want to... Oh, you good. cannot take... More energy tonight. I like no. that. Look. I was asked the question. I didn't want... It was my obligation as a businessman to my family, to my company, to my employees, to get along with all politicians. I got along with all of them. And I did a damn good job in doing it. Go ahead. So, he supports Pelosi. He supports Schumer. He supports Clinton. Got along with everybody. And when he asked asked Florida to have casino gambling, we said no. Wrong. We said no. And that's the simple fact. The simple fact is... Don't make things up, Jeff. Don't don't cut me off, Come on. Don't make things up. Jake, can I say something about that? Sure, Dr. Carson. Um, You know, when I entered this race, all the political pundits said, it's impossible. You can't do it because you're not connected with the money, and uh, there's no way that you can uh, raise what you need in order to compete successfully. I, in no way, am willing to get in the bed with special interest groups or lick the boots of billionaires. I have said to the people, if they want me to do this, please get involved. And we now have over 500,000 donations, and the money is coming in 
But the pundits forgot about one thing, and that is the people, and they are really in charge. Thank you, Dr. Carson. Let's move to Russia, if we could. Russia is sending troops and tanks into Syria right now to prop up a U.S. enemy, Bashar al-Assad. President Obama's incoming top general says, quote, Russia presents the greatest threat to our national security. Mr. Trump, you say you can do business with President Vladimir Putin. You say you will get along, quote, very well. What would you do right now if you were president to get the Russians out of Syria? Right, so, number one, they have to respect you. He has absolutely no respect for President Obama. Zero. Syria is a mess. You look at what's going on with ISIS in there. Now, think of this. We're fighting ISIS. ISIS wants to fight Syria. Why are we fighting ISIS in Syria? Let them fight each other and pick up the remnants. I would talk to him. I would get along with him. I believe, and I may be wrong, in which case I'd probably have to take a different path, but I would get along with a lot of the world leaders that this country is not getting along with. We don't get along with China. We don't get along with the heads of Mexico. We don't get along with anybody. And yet, at the same time, they rip us left and right. They take advantage of us economically and every other way. We get along with nobody. I will get along, I think, with Putin. And I will get along with others. And we will have a much more stable, stable world. So you, uh, just to clarify, the only answer I heard to the question I asked is that you would, you would reach out to Vladimir Putin and you would do what? You I would... believe that I will get along. We will do between that, Ukraine, all of the other problems. We won't have the kind of problems that our country has right now with Russia and many other nations. Senator Rubio, you've taken a very different approach to the, the question of Russia. You've called Vladimir Putin a, quote, gangster. Why would President Rubio's approach be more effective than President Trump's? Well, first of all, I have an understanding of exactly what it is Russia and Putin are doing, and it's pretty straightforward. He wants to reposition Russia once again as a geopolitical force. He himself said that the destruction of the Soviet Union, the fall of the Soviet Union, was the greatest geopolitical catastrophe of the 20th century. And now he's trying to reverse that. He's trying to destroy NATO. And this is what this is a part of. He is exploiting a vacuum that this administration has left in the Middle East. Here's what you're going to see in the next few weeks. The Russians will begin to fly, fly combat missions in that region, not just targeting ISIS, but in order to prop up Assad. He will also then turn to other countries in the region and say, America is no longer a reliable ally, Egypt. America is no longer a reliable ally, Saudi Arabia. Begin to rely on us. What he is doing is he is trying to replace us as the single most important power broker in the Middle East. And this president is allowing it. That is what is happening in the Middle East. That's what's happening with Russia. Thank and you, Senator Rubio. I want to bring in um, Carly okay. Fiorina. Having... Ms. Fiorina. Having met, met Vladimir yeah, Putin, met Vladimir if Putin. I may, having yes. met Vladimir Putin, I wouldn't talk to him at all. We've talked way too much to him. What I would do immediately is begin rebuilding the Sixth Fleet. I would begin rebuilding the missile defense program in Poland. I would conduct regular, aggressive military exercises in the Baltic states. I'd probably send a few thousand more troops into Germany. Vladimir Putin would get the message. By the way, the reason it is so critically important that every one of us know General Soleimani's name is because Russia is in Syria right now because the head of the Quds Force traveled to Russia and talked Vladimir Putin into aligning themselves with Iran and Syria to prop up Bashar al-Assad. Russia is a bad actor, but Vladimir Putin is someone we should not talk to because the only way he will stop is to sense strength and resolve on the other side. And we have all of that within our control. We could rebuild the Sixth Fleet. I will. We haven't. We could could rebuild the missile defense program. We haven't. I will. We could also, to Senator Rubio's point, give the Egyptians what they've asked for, which is intelligence. We could give the Jordanians what Thank they've you, asked Senator. for, bombs and materiel. We have not supplied Thank it. You. I will. We could arm the Kurds. They've been asking us for three years. All of this is within Thank our you. control. Thank you, Ms. Fiorina. While, you're, while you brought up the subject of General Soleimani of the Quds forces from Iran, the next president, no matter who he or she may be, will inherit President Obama's Iran deal. Senator Cruz, Governor Kasich says that anyone who is promising to rip up the Iran deal on day one, as you have promised to do, is, quote, inexperienced and, quote, playing to a crowd. Respond to Governor Kasich, please. Well, let me tell you, Jake, the single biggest national security threat facing America right now is the threat of a nuclear Iran. We've seen six and a half years of President Obama leading from behind. Weakness is provocative, and this Iranian nuclear deal is nothing short of catastrophic. This deal on its face will send over $100 billion to the Ayatollah Khamenei, 
making the Obama administration the world's leading financier of radical Islamic terrorism. This deal abandons 